Hi everyone, it's Camille here from the Thigh Gap Hack and today I am coming to you with a special interview that I've conducted with Tiffany Austin who you may have heard about in the news recently for her experience with the one and only Planet Fitness. Um, here's the strength search. I lift things up and put them down and what I believe is really a combination of everything I've been talking about and writing about for the past few months and something that I've experienced personally which is thin shaming and that it's just completely wrong for a person, uh, especially a company, to promote the culture of thin shaming and I wanted to talk more with Tiffany about her experience and bring this issue to the forefront, bring it to light. You know, I always say that if the shoe were on the other foot and the things that people say about thin women or people who want to be thin, if that were to be said to overweight women or obese women, then, you know, it would just be a fiasco it would be there would be a lot of blowback there would be immediately the person or the company would apologize but in Tiffany's case she has not received an apology and none seems to be forthcoming so I want to just now get into the interview with Tiffany and at the end of this, I want you guys to check out the link below because I am, yes, calling for a boycott of Planet Fitness from women like you, women like me, who work out with a goal, who are proud of our bodies, who are proud of our physiques, you know, that if you want to be thin, it shouldn't be, we shouldn't be meant to feel you know, embarrassed for that or be ridiculed or humiliated or harassed. So for women like us and for people like us that we need to really not be giving our money and our funds to an establishment that doesn't appreciate our business who have made pretty clear that we are not their target market, like they are not catering to us. So save your money for a gym who actually values and respects you as a customer planet fitness is not that gym so please check out the link to the boycott for the petition at change.org sign it and let's get this thing up so that we they can see the media can see that we're not going to just take this laying down we're not going to continue to be you know villainized we're not going to continue to be made to feel like something is wrong with us for wanting to be slim for wanting of to look a certain way uh, so please sign that petition like it share it with on your social media websites to get the word out people need to not be giving their money to places like this and we need to say something we need to push back against thin shaming Okay, so I hope you enjoy the interview. Let's get into it now. All right, thank you so much. Today we have Tiffany Austin with us. She's joining us from California. And I'm going to dive right into the interview. Thank you, Tiffany, for being with me today. Thank you for contacting me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So if anyone doesn't know, we're going to go into Tiffany's story and what happened to her with Planet Fitness. And when I heard your story, Tiffany, it actually really resonated with me because it's something that I write about a lot and that I faced personally, which is the issue of thin shaming. Yeah. So I let's let the readers know and the viewers know like what happened to you. First, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, What do you do in your everyday life? So um, I'm a vocalist and I am starting, you know, I started my own band. I'm going to be releasing an album, my debut album soon. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, the other interesting point about me is that I went to, I graduated from UC Berkeley Law about a year ago. And I took some time off to do my album because music is my first love. So I'm planning on taking the bar soon. Okay, great. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So you are, but you are a singer, you mentioned, and so you're yes, a performer. I so in, we all know, like, in that industry, then how you appear, your appearance and keeping up your, your body is pretty important 
to that to that field in the entertainment industry, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But I mean, that the reason why I wanted to join a gym, it was that you know wanting to keep fit and you know look good. That was kind of secondary, actually, to my doctor saying that I needed to start exercising. Um, I was in a car accident. I was It was minor. I was rear-ended about six months ago. And for some reason, the pain is lingering. I've had some back, hip, and neck issues. And so the doctor said, you should, you know, start exercising very gently over, you know, the course, and we'll just monitor that. So... I'm not the kind of person who's like motivated <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. So I thought, oh, when I saw the Planet Fitness billboard, I said, oh, okay, then I'll feel like I can go to a place and, you know, feel like there's people around me exercising and that can, you know, keep me on working out on a regular basis. But you, I mean, I saw the clip with you. Now you appear to be in good shape. Have you always been then pretty, like, naturally slender, naturally thin, or? Yeah, I mean, my granddad, he was just, like, very wiry, and so <laughs> if I had to describe <laughs> me, I, I, yeah, I feel like I've always been wiry, and, yeah, and people have been very vocal in pointing that out uh, <laughs> when I was growing up, so I did, you know, feel a little uncomfortable with people always having some comment about either how short I was or, you know, how skinny they thought I was. And, you know, so I'm not really a fan of, you know, people constantly pointing that out when there's other things of substance to talk about right. when you're dealing with someone. And so then you said that you were driving past, you got in a car accident, and how long... You were driving past and you saw the billboard for Planet Fitness, but before that you were not a member of a gym? Like you never worked out? No, I was never even, I wasn't even aware, you know, of the advertising or anything. Um, I just, I had just seen the billboard ten, dollars So, <laughs> and to a starving musician, that's like really exciting, right? Oh, right. hey, <laughs> not $60 a month? Okay. So, <laughs> right. So I went on a tour at the gym a couple of weeks ago, um, and the woman who took me around, she showed me the facilities. She told me about the dress code, and, and I saw, you know, no string tank tops. And I said, okay, well, what is that? I've never even heard of that. And so the woman said, well, you know, that's for bodybuilder types. It's, the you know, the man tank, mankini almost, you know. <laughs> it's really low. So, you know, I said, I don't even know what it is. Don't worry about it. I won't even have to, I won't be able to buy it. So really excited. Um, and so this past Monday, St. Patrick's Day, um, I signed up online. I got in my car about an hour later, drove over in my offending pink outfit um, <laughs> that you may have seen. Yes. Um, and so um, it's just a kind of a midriff. It's like a half tank. Um, and capris and it's just the stock is like puma brand you know grab off the rack at in the workout exercise clothing section um so when i went i went over in that outfit checked in and the people at the counter they had nothing to say about what i was wearing so if i was violating the dress code that could have been a great moment for them to tell me that um there were a few people at the counter that could have said that so i walked over, jumped on the treadmill, started fumbling around with buttons, started walking, and I noticed, you know, there's people looking at me, and I said, okay, maybe I look really stupid, because I don't know how to work this machine. <laughs> I haven't been in the gym for many years, um, <laughs> so I felt really uncomfortable, but I said, okay, you know what, I'm just going to put in my earbuds, listen to music, and start walking. So I'm about 15 minutes into my walk, when a um, staff member stops me, excuse me, I said, like, okay, and she said, um, we're getting complaints. You're intimidating other members with your tone physique. And I was kind of stunned because, you know, I didn't know about their no gym intimidation, lunk alarm stuff. Right. So I'm just thinking I'm at a gym working out and I'm now suddenly on Mars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm staring at the woman, and she says, I can go get you a tank top, or I can get you a T-shirt. Right. 
And she said, I, it, it can be a loaner t-shirt for you today. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I wasn't happy about it, but I preferred, the, you know, to just work out. That was more important to me. Right. So she left. I continued walking while I was waiting for her to go get the t-shirt. And then another staff member comes over about two or three minutes later telling me, well, we already gave you a, a complimentary t-shirt, so you, you have to go get that one. And I was just appalled by the way that I was being treated and the tone <laughs> that people were approaching me with. And I said, you know what, how about you? I just get my money back. So um, I asked for a manager. The manager wasn't there. I asked for corporate and was told that there's no corporate office. Oh. I later found out there was. Uh, <laughs> so I said, okay, you know, they, they canceled my membership. Luckily, my money hadn't been processed because I signed up that same day. And I left and I called the um, manager. I called back about an hour later when the manager was there and told him how unhappy I was with the fact that the gym that promises no gym intimidation intimidates and harasses people who come to their gym. Um, and so he told me that he would check with someone higher up and get back to me. And so that's kind of, yeah, that's where it's kind of left off. Okay. And then I, I read some reports that the, re the response from Planet Fitness hasn't been one in which they have apologized to you, right? Yeah. So yeah. No no one has reached out to say we're sorry that you had to experience this like embarrassing fiasco. I'm sure it must have been humiliating to. I was totally, totally embarrassed and humiliated because I, first of all, I already felt at me. I, I was starting to wonder if I was doing something wrong. And then to have staff come over, you know, two different staff members kind of, you know, I, and I use this language. I said, you know, I don't need to be dogpiled. <laughs> it's like, like a, it's like yeah. a scolding, right? It's like they're yeah, scolding, yeah. It. <laughs> like a public scolding for something. First of all, I don't feel like I should have been scolded for, it. and second of all, there's just a totally different way. If, I think there's two different issues here. It's either if there was a problem with the dress code, they could have approached me in a you know very kind manner and a, with a, with proper customer service. Excuse me, miss. Maybe someone didn't explain the dress code to you but this is what we need. And I could respond to that, you know, with total, complete, you know, be okay. Um, the other issue is that they didn't say that. They had, they took issue with my body. Right. And that, you know, is very, you know, it's, it's hurtful. Nobody wants to be in a place, you know, doing what you're supposed to be doing in a place wearing what you're supposed to be wearing in the place. For example, you go to Ross, you buy a bikini, you go to the beach, <laughs> and then you're told at the beach that your body is offensive right. to other people. Nobody wants to experience that. So, yeah, it was, it was very humiliating. It was embarrassing. It felt like a scold. It made me very, very angry. And no one from corporate has reached out to you to apologize for the experience. Not at all. Not at all. Interesting. Now, had you ever...